Yo, yo, yo! What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last one, we did the first side story. It was called Trust, I think. Wait, we can really go into it right now. Yeah, it was. So next is Understanding. And I see it's with Yuri and Sayori. But first, but first, before we, you know, we're going to start it, but like, in the last one, Monica and Sari were in the classroom and somebody peeked inside. We're about to find out who it is. Could it be Yuri? Who knows? But we're about to find out right now. Let's do this. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door, causing Monica and Sari to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Yuri! What more do you want from- And of course, yeah, this was the girl that they were talking about sitting there reading. Because we already know how Yuri is. We know. Before I start this, how y'all doing? Hope y'all doing good. Having a good day. Good week. All that good stuff. Alright, Yuri says nothing right now. Siari says nothing either. And Monica too. Like, can somebody say something? Siari eyes widen. Recognizing the girl. She very, she very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her! It's the girl! It's true. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sari had come across reading alone in the classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the literature club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? Uh, um, am I in the wrong place? No, no, no. No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please do come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Sari continues to fail, containing her incitement. It's happening! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for coming. Sorry, it's a little empty in here, because we don't have shit. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sari, and we run a literature club. Even though it's just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I I'd like to join your club. I mean, it says her name right there, but she didn't say her name. A already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I, I mean, I, I should be good enough. Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So, what's your name? Yuri? I'm Siari. And this is Monica. Sari, I already... Nice to meet you. She did already say her name, though. Um, do you like fantasy? Like, like, books? Yeah, she didn't say nothing. Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes, have you ever heard of Annabelle DuPont? Dupont? I think that's how you say the author's name. I can't say that I have, though. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book, and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. She's really passionate about this. You could borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible surprise. I said surprise experience. Monica stammers, caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. She, gl she glances sideways. I, oh, I can't talk right now. Stylingly asking for help. I'd love to! It sounds like you're really into them. So they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my other books in the locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Uh, you probably need to bring one for now. Sari nervously says that, knowing to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. True. Okay. I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sierra excitedly and chasing, exchanging glances. Oh, I, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have like no experience with fantasy. Maybe except stuff I read when I was a kid. That's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have 
different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is like her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that, Monica? Don't you think you should be more optimistic? Like, what are you talking about? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. So change that shit. I'm excited to get her to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're not... Because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. What the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that. Because you're, you're not hard to read. We know how you are. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. That's exactly what I want to do. Besides, Sari loses her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her finger against the darkly chunky book Yuri left sitting on her desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back! Her breath is slightly heavy, which, combined with her short time going, indicates she may have ran <laughs> at least part of the way. She definitely ran. She makes her way back over to Sayori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just equal to the size of the one already on the damn desk. Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um, uh, Sari nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think like, if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that from across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sari while Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at a book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So, what made you decide to join the club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea that someone was starting a literature club, but that's my fault, because I don't be paying attention to these recruit recruitment shits. I only found out because she... She glances over at Monica. Monica! Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly, Yuri's face darkens, and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid, I got too nervous and couldn't even look up, so she just walked out. It took me several days just to come here, because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided I was probably ira that was probably irrational. Wait. No, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. Like, I didn't want to interrupt you no more. I was actually really hoping you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario, even like when they really aren't true. Well, I was really nervous to come here for other reasons too, such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you right now. I definitely came at the right time. That makes me happy! I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come here. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I never really had the privilege of sharing interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things I am. Except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kinds of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things that she would think are dumb. So he pauses, a look of concern on her face. How about I tell you something that I'm into, then you can tell me about something you're into. I suppose that'll be okay. Okay. Well, I'm like into crafty things, like making cute little collages or decorating things, like cars or jewelry boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep having to buy things and make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off until the last minute anyway. So yeah, that's something kind of silly I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much. It's just that you'd be surprised about how much you could do with scissors and glue and stuff like that. 
So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Sari nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. No, you're not. You're stuck with me here now. You ain't going nowhere. I am not. Oh yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as the vice president of the literature club. So that's how she gave it to you so she you wouldn't go nowhere. There, now you're stuck with me. <laughs> hey, don't give me responsibilities when you know I can't handle them. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after having gotten cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have many people around. It's peaceful. And it's nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate anonymously for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I'd never have the chance to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do. If you don't let it slip through your fingers, your fat ass fingers. The three continue their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for the day. So are you two going to start on that book next club meeting? That's the plan! I'm so excited! Sayori beeps. Yuri collects her things. Once Peck, Yuri worried to see way to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As it, Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori, you are a lifesaver. I didn't do anything, I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I can put my energy toward other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here, with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting a book with her next club meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best, right? I think you'll do great. At the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. Which, is, I, I like that, though. That's right, you know. Yuri's just trying to shy, but she's excited. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again! Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri silently, silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um... I I'm sorry about yesterday. Huh? What are you talking about? Sari tilts her head, unsure of exactly what the hell she's talking about. Well, I mean the way I got overly excited to share my books, and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club. Haha, <laughs> you didn't even do anything wrong though. I thought it was kind of cute of how excited you were. Huh? Well still, I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Why? Because I know that you were just humoring me yesterday. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. What? If you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing though. Like, I don't understand. I'm over a couple of silent stretches between the two of them. She's like, what the hell's going on? Well, the thing is though, we don't even have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun that we could do together, reading your books. You know, like a club activity. That would be okay, right? No, 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 no. Um, I don't think she thinks so. Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. 
I'm sorry for being like this. She says sorry a lot. We know this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Mm. Sari pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Turning over, Sari reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bill. Isn't that like a Pokemon? That's a Pokemon, I'm pretty sure. Part 1 of the Everlast Saga. HA! It's Dusk Bell by Annabelle! Huh? Sorry, I'm ready now! Oh right, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? We're reading. Oh, it's useful to just draw things out sometimes. Like maps, timelines, family trees, or for just taking notes. Notes? I, I mean, yeah, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it'll be especially helpful for someone new to, to the genre. <laughs> Sarah's joke completely flew over Yuri's head. I mean, that was a joke? I didn't know that was a joke. But thinking about it, she decides that it's probably for the best that, she did, that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try my best to make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. Oh, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize with intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at it and anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's like everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No, not at all. I am not smart. Sari rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. And then you just made her shy. Anyway, would you like to get started? Okay. After the minor diver diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Sari through the basics of fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sari seems to have. But despite, despite Sari's expect, expectations, Yuri equitably guides her through a way that is such fun. It becomes evident that the world building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is one that Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like, like poetry and stuff. The things I write are just putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. You're into poetry? She just said it. I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way! <laughs> Yuri giggles, feeling Sari's heart with happiness when she realizes the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very f very fast, I just want to let you know that. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. Yuri jots Yuri's patient to her notes. Hey, that's for the book. I'm just kidding. But I'm kind of glad you're patient, because sometimes I need that. A lot of times. Sari flips through the first few pages of the book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Sari speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Uh, well, in this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Sari turns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm-hmm. A lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Hmm. The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sari's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions have been reversed, with Sari easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, 
Are they talking about the past right now or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnes is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sally rubs her temples like I can't understand this shit. The two of them continue, with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value with the notes, as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often, and even adding to them. But her reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her feeling that she'll come across as stupid. I mean, I feel that. I, I, I feel the same way. At last, Sayori reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sari takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sari tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, I, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and to try to keep doing my best, so I can see the way that you do. Uh, the relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers, quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses and shakes her head. We could do something else tomorrow. We don't have to do this. But, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I, I don't understand. I I'm sorry. What is she saying sorry for? I don't want to do this anymore. That's all. I'm sorry that I made you. She's... Look at her face. She's so confused like you didn't make me. I wanted to. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me though. Sari is left alone with her words. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. This is not good. Leaving Sari alone like that? How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at, and I still mess it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? Drowned in guilt, Sari stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. This is horrible! Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, she'd be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, that's the first part. This is not good, y'all. This is not good. For the first time, Sierra is the first to enter the club room. Where's Monica? Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri even show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't even good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Sarah continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Yuri, I don't... Yuri might not be coming. I don't know. Da, da, da. Minutes pass, and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Where the hell is Monica? No, y'all didn't leave her by herself. Oh, here's Monica right here. Gosh, I'm so late. Where the hell were you at? Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? Okay, okay. I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Monica rounds the corner, approaching the club room. As she does so... Yuri? Oh no. Ah! Yuri jumps to the sound of Monica's voice. Why did I scream like that? She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait for outside for me. The door to the club room is always open. It's not... 
Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the clubroom through a window, then looks away. A actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you in today instead. Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes! Monica is utterly confused. I am too! Why is Yuri asking all this all of a sudden, when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the clubroom to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. I don't know why you got that smile. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Yeah, you're lying. You're lying. Monica's worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so conflict avoiding after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk. She had to make a couple of couple copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with these new ones. Yuri nods, and the two set off. Leaving Sayori by herself, Monica knows that's not the best thing to do. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds, it, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up a conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up a distinctive conversation. How the heck does Sierra even do this? <laughs> Sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Mm-hmm. Sierra did tell me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel like a, a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not even good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's so cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the, it's like the club was working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing it onto her. Yuri falls silent again, as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No. It's just me. I, I just... Yuri pauses. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining, but uh, speed it up. Tell me what you want to say. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club. It's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Uh, Monica pauses and thinks. Hmm. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course! I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would this be? I see. Yuri looks a little relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. <sighs> deep breath. Oh my gosh. And I just realized something. Doki Doki Lyric Club, one of her songs was called Deep Breath. She does take a lot of deep breaths. I, I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about an arbitrary topic? I could talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't even know when to stop. But for anything else, I have no idea what to say. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored 
or made fun of or taken pity on. And Sarah falls into that third category. She what? Hold on. Are you saying that Sarah is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. How do you know that? See, now you're just blaming her for something you probably are wrong about. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or you don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sarah is too nice to me. I was so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with that, whatever I pushed onto her. Nobody deserved to be to put themselves through some kind of diff, that could, yeah, that kind of discomfort just because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. Because I really don't. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Your sharp words cut into the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of a conversation, the two stop short in the hallway. Prioritize, prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down, her fist, her fist clenched. I, I think, I think you should tell her that. I can never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. Sari's different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So, if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make that happy. That's the problem. You weren't hearing me? What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird ass needs? Nothing to say. Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm making myself sound so... No. I think I'm actually starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish the thought out loud. It's something that Sierra would be able to say better. Sierra is someone who would give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has a difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sierra to be even more assertive in her kindness. Fur further ex I don't even know how to say that. Neither, purpose, neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. That's the name, understanding. Sierra wants to be your friend. I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sari, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to be have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I didn't mean to say that. My head is just it's so resistant to everything. I, I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping the club make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah, you're right. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. But she doesn't? Probably. Oh. This this kind of critical thinking is something I'm really bad at. Like I'm terrible at this. You know, about people. So, so thank you. Anytime. I'm always here. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Okay, well, you still need to have a conversation with Sayori, who's alone at the moment. Yuri and Monica finish replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Yuri followed along. That sounds about right. But as the club, club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. I don't. If I don't do it now, I probably never will. Yuri starts toward the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're, you're not just going to wait outside, are you? <laughs> I can take a walk. I don't need to do this shit. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. You know this. I like to make my own, though, so please don't worry about it. Like, yeah, just go away. Although I suppose that one's, one's downside of reading here in the club rather than at home 
I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess I had nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for tea in the club room. That's how they did it. They asked. Okay, this is making sense. You can use, like, electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think it would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck to you. You kinda need it. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea isn't enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking more, one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. I don't know why y'all left Sayori this by herself. I mean, she looks all right. Yuri! Wait, 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 hold on, I'm not done yet! Yuri shuffles a bunch of, I mean, Yuri. Sayori shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, uh, um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At the moment, she realizes how Sayori has been spending her afternoon. I, I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make all the way through the next chapter first. But I got most of the way through it. And look! Sari holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes, beautifully produced with inventions, categories, and even color coding. As Jerry sees it, as Jerry sees it her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please stop. I, I can't take this. Yuri? What are you talking about? Sarah's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Sarah looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? Like, tell me what's going on. I don't understand. So if I did something wrong, please just tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently, mm -hmm. just because I'm weird. But, but I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like, I don't want your pity! Oh my gosh. Why, why did I do that? Oh my gosh, that was so bad. Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard to just articulate your thoughts? Articulate. Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds through the internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Sayori or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here, before Monica sees her like this, and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. Before, but before Yuri can put any strength in her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap her from behind. Sayori! Oh my gosh, that is so... I like that! I mean, she's pressing her legs. Like, what? Pressing... Okay. Let me not say what I was thinking. It's okay. Sari whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself able to protest or pull away from Sari's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through her clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that things you're feeling in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise. I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings, and we'll talk about them together, okay? Mary sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I, I, I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people. So it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sierra doesn't erupt. 
Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought it was my, finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. That's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool out of myself. I hate myself for that. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. But how am I supposed to expect that when I can't even behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That, that's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Sari, who can feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you a bit better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things that you need too. But, I feel like that would just be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was afraid you would get frustrated with me. But, I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning that I have a, how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know. But my irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? It definitely is. Yeah? Irrational fears. Well, you know, there's no way that you could frustrate me because I already like you as a person that you are. I know you say you have a hard time believing that. But I promise it's true. Dot, dot, dot. You don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you really consider it in your own way. You know? Worrying so much about people's feelings? We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club. <laughs> but that's the best part. Because we're all different. And have different interests. Like, about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. I promise that's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we can never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons why you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that, but I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. Yuri fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere of surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sari's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it. So I cut it all off. I was wondering that. I was wondering how did they have the hairstyles that they do. So she wants long hair, but she can't take care of it. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening, rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. Sari, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if the literature club can make that happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. It really, that's true. That's really true, though. Well then. Based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But, you know we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course, I'm not going to judge anything this early on though, so we'll just see what happens. Oh, and, um, it's not good to touch people without their consent first. I mean. That's true. Oh, oh no, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. I'm back! Here comes Monica. Monica's back! I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sari trots over to Monica. Ah, uh, she whispers loudly. Can I hug you? <laughs> sure, Sari. Sari wraps her arms around Monica. Oh yeah, Yuri, it might be good to know Sari can be kind of a hug monster. Ah, 
Hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it would spell disaster. <laughs> there he laughs. Monica perplexing looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our real, first real activity as a literature club. Uh, about that. Well, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me to not return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. Oh shoot, that was it? I was I wasn't expecting it to end like with her smiling. Alright, y'all, well, that's the second side story. We got hold on. Let me let me go to it. Just so y'all know what we're we'll dealing with. So we got Oh, Nasuki comes in this one. So we got respect. We got balance and we got reflection and then self-love. Oh my gosh, so we got four more. Yeah, four more. Oh my gosh, well, y'all see what we're going to be dealing with. Nasuki, of course, is the last person. And after that, then they just, I guess, learn about each other. We're going to find out. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.